everyone. Today we're going to be making this Halloween scene card using the Happy Haunting stamp set by Lawn Fawn. This is an older set. I'm not sure how many years old it is, but it's one of my favorites for Halloween and I break it out often when making Halloween cards. So let's get started. We're going to use a piece of 110 pound Nina cardstock cut to five and a half by four and a quarter. I traced the moon using one of my drinking glasses at home that is three and a quarter inches across. So what we want to do here is we want to make sure that about three quarters of the background is covered by the moon because we're going to sit our haunted house right in the middle of that later on once we finish the background. So I traced the moon using a C0 marker and now I'm going over that with a B000 marker and my marker is kind of dry and I didn't feel like getting up so <laughs> to refill it so in a second I'm going to just switch it out with a BG000 which is pretty close to the B000 and I'm just going to keep going around and around the moon just so that we can fill in the little glow that's going to surround it before we start working on the background with some of our darker markers. Now I'm taking a BG07 and I'm going to go right to the edge of the paper with that um, and I'm going to keep going in a circular motion so that we keep the whole theme of like having a ring around the moon going. And I'm going to do the same on the other side and I'm just going to put one coat down here and then we're going to start blending the BG000 into the BG07 and I'm using a BG01 to do that. And here you just want to be careful that your paper isn't too wet because then you could get some, um, you could end up marking up the paper. If you look in the upper right hand corner, it's like a little bit mottled looking on mine and that's, that's what happens when the paper is too wet or, and you try to put too much ink on it. But we'll, we'll straighten it out a little bit later, just something to watch out for when you're coloring with Copics. Now we're going to fill in the face of the moon and to do that I'm using some W0, um, W0 marker and I'm just making a bunch of scribbles focusing on the top section because our house is going to take up most of the middle and then I'm going to add some shading with a W1 marker um, to some areas of the scribbles that I had laid down and then we're going to go over everything with a W00 marker just to blend it all together and as you'll see this is going to fade back a lot um, once we get some other colors down. Now I'm using that Haunted House stamp from the Lawn Fawn Happy Haunting stamp set and I just stamped that with Memento Black ink which is a Copic friendly ink. Now I'm just drawing the ground beneath the Haunted House using a C4 marker and um, I'm just going to kind of fill in the whole ground area with the C4 and then we're going to go in with some darker markers in a second to add some shading. So this is a C8 and I'm just going to kind of, what I'm trying to do here is make a shadow. So I'm not going to go to the very bottom of the page, but I'm probably going to cover I would say like 80% of the ground with this dark color. Then I'm going to blend it all together with a C5. And I want it to look a little bit uneven and mottled. And we're going to go over this a whole bunch of times, but I'm just trying to give it like a, a smoky, ghostly, haunted feel. That's, that's what I was looking to do. Now we're going to fill in the windows. And to do that, I'm going to use a Y11 and then a Y38. And I'm just going to leave like I'm going to use the Y38 in the very corner of the windows and the doors and then I'm going to blend it all together with Y11. So the first question I have for you, who do you think lives in this house? Do you think the person is living or dead? Um, have they lived there for a long time or a short time? So I'd love to hear um, what you think and what kind of story that you're envisioning as you're watching this card being made. So just leave, drop me a comment and let me know what you think. We're going to fill in the rest of the haunted house using a bunch of cool grays and I'm filling in the 
entire house with a C02. And this is one of those markers. I couldn't find a C02 when I bought these markers a couple of years ago. So I bought a blank marker and then I just filled it in with a refill. So that's why that one doesn't have the, the C2 markings on it. And that's a little trick if you ever find yourself in that situation where you can find the refill but not the marker itself. Just go and buy a blank marker and fill it up with your refill and then, then there you go. You'll have a, a Copic marker in the color that you need. For the house, I'm gonna go around the edges with a C6 and then I'm gonna blend it together with a C4, leaving the center part open because we're gonna go back over that with a C2. And the reason I'm doing that is because we wanna make it look like the moon you know, is making some kind of a reflection on the hat house and to give it some depth. Now I'm going to make like the little um, underside of the roof a little bit darker by going over it with a C7. I'm going to do the same with the, the um, little front of the house that's connecting to the back just to kind of set it off and make it interesting looking. I'm going to add some shading on the right hand side of the steps and some shading towards the back of the house and then on the back of the bottom of the steps blend it together with a C4, leaving the middle open, and we'll probably go back over that with a C2. Um, this was one I had a hard time kind of figure out, figuring out where the shading should go. So whenever that happens, usually what I do is I make the edges darker and then the center light. And if you do that, you, you pretty much can't go wrong. Um, your image will have some kind of interest and some type of depth whether or not the shading you know, actually follows what the light would be, it'll still look interesting. So that's what I did here. Now I am coloring in the roof. Um, and I'm gonna do that by using a C7 marker. You could use any dark marker towards the right of each of the little roof shingles. And then I'm going to not blend that in very well because I want there to be um, a pretty big difference in the shade between the shadow and then the, the shingle underneath it. For the roof, I'm just going to go over that with a lighter gray than the gray that is right underneath the roof. For the chimney, I'm going to use the same method that I used for the front of the roof, which is a little bit dark, um, some little dark strips or stripes on one side and then kind of blend it all together with a lighter marker. Now we're gonna add some weeds and whatnot around the house and to do that I'm using a C9 and I'm just flicking my marker up and down um, on an angle, both right and left. And you just want it to look kind of scattered and messy and overgrown. And then I'm going over it with a C6 and I'm gonna make the little weeds that I'm making in C6, the lighter color, I'm gonna make them extend up beyond the C8 um, or 9, whatever that darker color was. And then I'm gonna go over everything again with a C4, just so that it looks like there's a whole bunch of weeds in the background, and some of them are really far away. Um, you know, you're getting some reflection from the moon, etc. Now we're gonna start drawing in our trees, and we're gonna put a tree on each side of the house and I wanted this to look like a, a spooky Halloween tree with no leaves, just a whole bunch of skinny branches, um, some reaching into the face of the moon. And to do this again, like this is just fun. Don't think too much about it. Just draw the trunk of your tree and then have some branches extending to the right, to the left, and then up towards, straight up towards the sky as well. Um, if you're uncomfortable drawing trees, the Happy Haunting stamp set by Lawn Fawn has some, some trees that you can just stamp on and you could use those instead. But I really encourage you to stretch yourself and try to draw your own trees because once you get the hang of it, you'll love it. And you'll, you know, no two of your cards will ever be the same because no no two trees are ever the same. So it's a way to kind of put your own unique artistic touch into your cards when you make some little like background items like that by hand. And then I think you also feel empowered, right? 
Like once you start drawing this stuff, you're like, oh, wow, I can do it. I don't need a stamp. Um, so try it out. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna draw the tree on the right. I'm using the same method that I did for the tree on the left, although I started this one with a little lighter of a Copic marker. I don't remember if that was a mistake or intentional, but we're gonna darken it up with some darker markers um, in a second. Um, if you wanted to keep it light, that would be fine. It would just make the tree appear as though it was further away or further in the distance than the tree on the left. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're putting in a bunch of trees into a scene, the trees that are lighter and that are smaller are gonna appear further away and the trees that are larger and darker are gonna appear in the forefront. So now I'm just going over this tree with a few different shades of my cool gray markers because I wanted it to have a little bit of interest. I wanted it to look like there were some, um, you know, little growths in the tree or veins in the tree um, that were being hit by the moon and kind of standing out in the light. So that's what I was doing on the right. Now I decided at this point that this little house was gonna be in the middle of a graveyard. So I started drawing some tombstones and some crosses that are kind of um, a little bit off to the center. So it's like, in, I guess, a very, very old graveyard. Um, and now I'm going to draw in an old um, wire fence that's going to surround the property and kind of follow the curves in the, in the land. And this is simple. I'm just drawing some straight black lines, um, a little bit on an angle, just so it looks like it's broken down a little bit. And now I'm just going over the ground with, I'm going to go over it with a few different cool grays in the, in the darker tones, just to, again, make it look like it's a, a spooky, dark, misty scene. And I'm just putting some, um, just adding some more interest here. Now I'm just making some little scribbles along the bottom and I'm going to go back over that with a lighter marker just to, to blend it all together. And then once we're done with this, I decided that the background looked a little bit too light. So we're going to go and darken that up and I'm using a BG09 here. And I'm going to go right over the trees, right down to the bottom. And we're just going to kind of darken up the sides and then go over it again with a BG07 on both sides. And then follow the shading all the way to the middle with our BG01. That's what I'm using here just to brighten things up a bit. And now our BG000. And in a second, we're going to finish up this shading by adding in some accents with a white gel pen. Um, here, I'm just kind of going over the fence again because I felt like it got washed back a little bit with the other shading that I had done. So now I'm going to add some highlights on the, on the right side of the step on some of the shingles on the roof all along the top of the of the roof a little bit on the chimney on the floor and now i'm going to also add some highlights to the bottom part of the fence just so that you can actually see that it's a fence because otherwise there's so much black in that bottom part of the scene that it's hard to kind of tell what's going on i'm also going to put a little white rim around the tombstone and i'm going to add rip there um, just so that it's clear that this is a this is a tombstone and then it looks a little bit like it's um, being lit up by the moon, at least the top part of it. Now I'm just going over the bottom of the scene again with some dark um, cool gray marker and I'm going to add some highlights to the trees and I'm putting the highlight on the part of the tree that is closest to the moon because that in my mind is where the reflection would hit. 
and I'm just going to add that to most of the branches. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some like spooky little orbs into the sky. And to do that, I'm just going to touch lightly with my colorless blender and I'm going to make some of the orbs really small and some of them larger. And the way that I do that is if I want to make a large orb, I'll press the marker down deeper into the paper. And if I want a really small, little orb of light, I'll just very, very lightly press the tip against the paper and then that'll make a smaller, a smaller little spot. I'm just going to add them all between the trees, trying to focus on the darkest part of the sky because that's where the orbs are going to show up the best. They're not going to show up that great um, on the light blue section around the moon or on the moon. And then we're going to add some stars into the sky as well. And I'm just doing that with my white gel pen. Again, focusing on the darkest part of the sky. We're going to peel off our painter's tape. And I always put painter's tape on my Copic paintings because I want to have that 1 8 of an inch border around the whole card because I just think it looks nice. And because I find that my marker glides across the paper easier if the whole paper is kind of fastened down to a surface. Okay, so I used the Happy Haunting sentiment from the Happy Haunting set and I kind of curved it so that it fits right on the inside of the moon. I'm adding some bats from the Happy Haunting stamp set as well. There's two sides bats, two sizes of bats. I put the larger bats at the top so they look like they're closer to us. I'm gonna give them some glow in the dark eyes with a white gel pen. And that's gonna do it for this card. So I'm gonna show you another card that I made using this same stamp set, but with some different colors. And it's right here. It says, have a spectacular Halloween. I use some um, blue violet shades and some yellow greens to make this one. And the trees are dark brown instead of black. And here we are, here is the painting that we worked on today. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and I really hope that you give this Copic painting a try. It's a lot of fun and I think anyone that you give this card to will just love it. Thanks a lot everyone and I will see you soon in the next video.